The next speaker is Martin Åmark, CEO at Xbrain Biopharma. So I'm going to present uh, Xbrain Biopharma and we are engaged in development of uh, so-called biosimilars. So that is um, uh, follow-on products to already approved biologics, which we can launch post patent expiry of uh, the originated products. We are fulfilling a strong purpose. Um, we are increasing the accessibility really of uh, biological drugs with the introduction of biosimilars and realizing huge savings for the healthcare systems, which could be direct to, directed to, to other needs. Um, our core competence is really to take um, biosimilars all the way from cell line development to approval. And the way we differentiate ourselves towards our competitors is uh, to apply our platform technology, which gives us lower production cost. That's the key. Uh, exciting times for the company. Uh, we are launching together with Stada our first uh, biosimilar uh, this month in Europe, Eximluse. We'll talk more about that. We have a target to generate 1 billion Swedish crowns in annual income three years post-launch, as so we have great commercial expectations on this product. This shall also bring us to a cash flow positive stage of the company during the course of 2024. And we have set up the company with close to 100 employees and uh, laboratory development uh, facility in, in Solna so that we can start one new development program annually and expand our portfolio of currently five biosimilar candidates. So that's our, our midterm focus. I'll start by going through um, a little bit more about the biosimilar market than about Xprin as a company. We're going to come to Ximlusi, the product which is launched uh, these days, and then our uh, portfolio of uh, further four biosimilar candidates. So biosimilars are then uh, follow-on products to biological drugs. Biological drugs contains a protein as an active substance, and this needs to be produced via so-called recombinant DNA technology. And uh, the molecules are so complex in their structure that you cannot prove that you have an identical product originator. You, you have to therefore demonstrate as high similarity as possible and therefore the concept of a biosimilar. Development of biosimilars is uh, faster and more cost effective and contains lower risk than development of uh, novel drugs. Typically we need to spend about 100 million euro throughout the development program. It takes us seven years. Uh, but uh, the risk when we go into uh, uh, the clinic is very low. 95% of all the biosimilars that have gone into a phase 3 trial have ended up on the other end with uh, a regulatory approval. And when the products come to market, what we've seen is that they take an uh, absolute majority of uh, the originated product sales. 75% volume market share three years after launch uh, has been kind of... Uh, historic experience. Uh, of course, then at the lower price point, uh, we are counting on roughly speaking a 50% price discount versus originator when we think about our first uh, products. And uh, this is a market which is growing very quickly, 17% uh, annual growth per year expected to 2030. And that is of course due to patent expiries on many blockbuster biological drugs and also due to uh, the strongly increasing penetration or market share the biosimilars take versus uh, the originator. So an attractive market we are addressing, we have our competitive edge in our platform technology. Um, and that um, consists of, on the one hand, a library of proprietary host cells, which we use uh, to express or produce the target protein. We have technologies for how to genetically modify these host cells to express the protein we're interested in, in and as productive way as possible. And we have many different uh, tools and methods we use in the process development. This is a fermentation process where the host cells, the genetically modified host cells, um, with the addition of oxygen and nutrition, are expressing uh, the protein there that genetically modified to, to express. And we have techniques how to do that to get to the highest possible productivity, which leads to lowest production cost. We have 10 approved patents and 24 uh, pending, so a growing IP portfolio around our technology. And five um, products in our portfolio addressing a market of uh, 53 billion euro, if we think about uh, the combined sales of the respective originated products. And our strategy is to uh, 
license out uh, the rights to our products to commercialization partners at the preclinical stage. We've done that successfully with our first two products. Uh, we have partnership with Stada, Bausch and Lomb and Bayern around these products. And we have 100 million euro of upcoming milestones up until a regulatory approval in Europe and the US uh, for these uh, respective programs. And then there are royalties and or wins, um, profit sharings uh, when the product uh, comes to market. Uh, so I think strong partners uh, for our uh, first two products. And now uh, Ximlusi, which is a biosimilar to Lucentis, an eye drug used in treatment of uh, several uh, severe eye diseases leading to deteriorating vision and worst case blindness. Great market to come with the biosimilar too. There is an issue with uh, high, high drug prices leading to limited accessibility. Even in Europe and the US, our assessments are that 50% of the affected individuals still goes untreated due to high pharmaceutical costs. That is something we're going to change now uh, with introducing Ximlusi as a biosimilar uh, at a significant price discount uh, versus the originator. We have approval in Europe and we have produced and released the launch material and Stada, our commercialization partner in Europe, are as we speak launching the product and getting the first sales um, in the first countries. Uh, meanwhile, we are in the process of resubmitting the BLA to FDA and uh, we are expecting to get an approval of, um, of Ximlusi in the US uh, first quarter of next year and then allowing our uh, US partner Bausch & Lomb to launch the product uh, over there. Meanwhile, we're also um, uh, doing things to maximize the value of uh, this product um, to the company. We are scaling up the production process in order to reduce the production cost. And we're also, uh, apart from the vial, which is currently approved and being launched, developing a prefit syringe, which we can bring uh, to the market for an even uh, increased um, benefit for patients and uh, retina clinics. Uh, all in all, a big market close to 13 billion euro if we count in all the originated products um, in this class of drugs, uh, mainly Lucentis and Ilea. Um, but we do believe that biosimilars to Lucentis also will take market from uh, mainly Ilea, which um, is similar from an efficacy and safety perspective, uh, and also in real clinical setting used uh, at a similar fashion with regards to frequency of of injections. So huge uh, market uh, opportunity really. Um, two great partners in uh, Stada and Bausch and & Lomb and uh, good commercial terms I do believe. With Stada we are uh, getting 50% of the profits generated from their sales across Europe. Um, with Bausch & Lomb it's a more traditional license deal where we get a uh, portion of uh, gross profits generated. But Europe now, which is uh, very interesting as uh, the product has been launched uh, as we speak across Europe, 4 billion uh, euro market opportunity. Stada spent a good part of last year to prepare for the launch. Uh, they have um, developed um, all uh, the launch material, they've, they've trained uh, the sales reps, uh, they are participating in the so important tenders uh, to uh, uh, be awarded and uh, be able to uh, uh, supply the drug in accordance to agreed upon prices uh, with the payers. Um, and they have experience with regards to launching and commercializing biosimilars across Europe with uh, five biosimilars already on the market. Uh, so we're very comfortable in that star that will do a great job in uh, launching the product across Europe and uh, generating a good first year of, uh, of sales uh, in 2023. And then looking beyond with our further portfolio, the second uh, biosimilar candidate we have other development is targeting Simsia. Uh, Simsia is um, a so-called TNF inhibitor used in treatment of um, psoriasis and rheumatoid arthritis, uh, 2 billion euro of sales. And our biosimilar candidate uh, is the only one under development globally targeting Simsia. And we do believe that that still will hold true by the time of patent expiry. And that's, of course, very exciting uh, since it's a fairly big drug of 2 billion uh, euro. We have a partnership with Biogen. Um, I think it's a, a good structure of this uh, deal. Uh, we uh, uh, got an upfront payment of 8 million US dollar uh, by signing. There are 80 million US dollar of milestone payments until approval and then royalties uh, on sales. 
And we are responsible under this partnership for the preclinical development, which we believe we are going to conclude during the course of this year with scale up and production of clinical material. Then Bayern uh, is going to take over the program and start and fund uh, the, the clinical development. So we believe from experience perspective that this program will turn into profit uh, during the course of next year. And then uh, our oncology portfolio, which uh, consists of biosimilar candidates to Optivo, Keytruda and Darsalex, expected to be huge products with close to 50 billion uh, euro of uh, combined um, annual sales by time of patent expiry. For the first biosimilar candidate here, the one to uh, Optivo, we have finalized uh, process development in-house and demonstrated uh, the analytical similarity. Next stage is now to uh, sign a contract with a uh, contract manufacturer and uh, scale up and produce clinical material, something that we're going to initiate uh, during the coming months. Uh, we also have ambitions to do uh, an out licensing deal with a commercialization partner with this portfolio during the course of this year. And I do believe this is um, feasible. We have a couple of um, exciting discussions ongoing, and uh, these programs are getting to the stage which our Simsia biosimilar candidate was at when we did a deal with Bayern. Uh, so uh, we're very much looking forward to uh, be able to uh, get back to this and communicate around the potential deal around this portfolio during this year. So to summarize, we're targeting a very attractive market, a biosimilar market, uh, probably one of the fastest growing uh, segments in the pharmaceutical industry. And uh, generating big values to society in terms of increasing accessibility uh, to these uh, biological drugs and also realize uh, savings uh, for the healthcare systems. We're basing our activity on a patented platform technology which gives us significantly lower production cost compared to uh, competitors and that uh, has been a strong factor in us being able to uh, strike these uh, deals with um, established pharmaceutical companies such as Stada, Bauer, Shalom and, and Bayern. Exciting year for Xpain this year as uh, our first uh, biosimilar is launched uh, by a partner Stada in Europe, a 4 billion euro market opportunity and we're getting towards a US approval and the launch uh, during the course of uh, next year. And then uh, exciting times also with our, um, our portfolio where we expect that our um, uh, biosimilar candidate to Simsia will turn into profit during the course of next year, as we've concluded the, the production of clinical material to our partner Bayern, uh, also that we do a deal with the licensing partner for, uh, for our oncology portfolio during the course of this year. So that's to summarize and why I do believe that uh, it's exciting times to come in as uh, an investor in Xbrain uh, during this year. Thank you. And you said that your goal this year is to be cash flow positive. Could you elaborate a bit on how you work towards that goal? Yeah, during next year we expect to, to okay, hit, so hit that target. Yeah, to hit okay. that target of being cash flow positive. Well, of course, it's on the back of income generation from Xim Lucy, um, which starts now this year and uh, will only grow during the years to come. So it's uh, due to that, and then also um, that our second. Uh, by similar candidates, seems by similar, similar candidates turning into profits uh, during the course of next year, as we've concluded the, the, the scale up at production of clinical material and Bayern is taking over. And uh, then that we uh, succeed in doing a license deal for the oncology portfolio so that we get, can get some uh, shared um, funding for the continued uh, development. And I'm also curious, how do you work with choosing new projects and which uh, indications to go into? So we have the ambition to initiate one new program annually and that's uh, what we have capacity for and uh, we're selecting on a couple of uh, criteria. First, it's crucial to come to market by time of patent expiry and we know it takes uh, approximately seven years to develop a biosimilar. So what we start now, we look seven years ahead in time what goes off patent then. And then we uh, want to see um, a sizable products so above a billion euro sales and then we look at how uh, uh, the competitive advantage we believe we're going to have with our platform technology. And we prefer to go with products where we believe uh, we're going to have as strong competitive advantage as possible. Uh, but with regards to the therapeutic area, we uh, have been and we are agnostic. We look more at the other parameters in the selection. 
And if we look at biosimilars in general, how would you say that the market differs between uh, more traditional generics and biosimilars? It's a big difference uh, with regards to the entry barriers and thereby also the number of uh, biosimilars that come to market on each originated product losing its patent protection. Uh, where in the small molecule generic world, uh, you typically can see 10 to 15 generics coming to market uh, short time after patent expiry and prices being pushed down 90% compared to uh, pre-patent expiry pricing. Biosimilars, we've seen, you know, three to five um, biosimilars typically on each, uh, on each product losing patent uh, protection. And prices um, typically have gone down over time to 50% uh, uh, below uh, originated pricing. And that is due to um, the more limited competition compared to uh, small molecules generics. And the entry barriers are, you know, technological and scientific. Uh, it, it requires a, a deeper uh, capability with regards to development and production of these uh, type of drugs. And then, of course, also financially speaking, since the investment going into such a development program is more uh, significant than for small molecule generics. I see. Thank you so much for coming here. Thank you.